With Capcom's Devil May Cry 5 right around the corner, we will once again join our favorite demon hunter Dante on a new adventure. But we here at Suggestive Gaming figured it would be a good idea to go over Dante and his ragtag group of misfit stories so far. Before we begin, let's first address the chronology of the Devil May Cry series. While there has been some debate over the order of some events, we will be covering them as recently laid out by Capcom producer Matt Walker. Also, please note that we will not be covering the non-canon DMC Devil May Cry remake slash reboot by Ninja Theory, but keep your eyes peeled because that might be coming in a separate video. With all of that out of the way, this is what you need to know about Devil May Cry. Our story begins in ancient times, where a war between the underworld and the human world was taking place. This battle between dark and light was eventually ended by a rebelling demon who rose up against the ruler of the dark world, Mundus, to save the human world and thus become known as Sparta, the legendary Dark Knight. Sparta also closes the gate between the two worlds in a ritual sealing a tower built by devil worshippers called Temenigru. To seal the tower, Sparta was forced to sacrifice a priestess as well as his own demonic power, placing it into his sword to ensure its strength. He also takes the perfect amulet, the key that allowed one to enter the demon world. The sword's powers then fall dormant, requiring the amulet to awaken them again. Sparta one day disappeared from public eye, becoming known only through legend. Sometime in the 20th century, however, Sparta reappeared, meeting and falling in love with a human named Eva, to whom he gives the perfect amulet as a gift. Eva gives birth to twins, named Dante and Virgil, and Sparta later disappears due to unrevealed circumstances, leaving his wife and sons alone. During the boys' upbringing, Eva gives them each half of the perfect amulet. However, not long after, Mundus, planning his revenge on Sparta's family from the sealed demon world, sends his demons after them. They subsequently kill Eva, but Dante is able to escape, believing his brother Virgil to have died as well. Later on, now an adult, Dante has opened a shop, working as a devil hunter, hunting or protecting others from demons for a bounty, using the sword his father left to him, Rebellion. In his travels, he adopts a pseudonym, Tony Redgrave, and meets Nell Goldstein, the proprietor of a gun shop called 45 Caliber Works, whom he forms a close friendship with. However, shortly before her death, she fashions a pair of semi-automatic pistols called Ebony and Ivory, which she gives to Tony with an inscription to him. After losing another motherly figure, Dante reverts to his true name, dropping the Tony Redgrave moniker. Sometime later, Dante's associate Enzo Farino enters his shop and offers Dante a job to find a missing girl named Alice. Dante reluctantly accepts the job after learning of a hefty reward. Meanwhile, Virgil, still very much alive, is seeking out information on his father when he comes across a scholar, Arkham, who recognizes him as one of the sons of Sparta. Arkham, a purveyor of the Black Arts, had previously sought to become a demon after learning of Sparta and his immeasurable power, going so far as to sacrifice the mother of his child. His ritual had failed, however, leaving him permanently scarred and his daughter Mary vengeful, vowing to one day find and kill him to avenge her mother. Arkham informs Virgil of Temen Negru, as well as the seals they must destroy in order to resurrect it and the true nature of his amulet, explaining that they must retrieve his brother's half to open the gate to the demon world to retrieve his father's sword, the Force Edge, as well as all of the power within it. Meanwhile, Dante locates Alice and finds that she had been lured to a mansion by a demon who possessed her rabbit doll. She will not return and the rabbit reveals that he had hired Dante, wanting to see a son of Sparta in action. As Dante leaves, the rabbit attempts to get Dante to hand over his amulet, but Dante refuses and walks away. Virgil arrives at the mansion, having been working with the rabbit to get the amulet. He kills the demon, and Alice stays to help him and Arkham. She then heads off to Dante's shop to steal his amulet. Along the way, Arkham's daughter Mary comes across Alice, and unaware of her true intentions, helps her find Dante's shop. There, Alice steals Dante's amulet, but he notices her and gives chase. He arrives at a church, and is surprised and relieved to find his brother still alive. However, after a conversation, they discover that the two have opposite goals, and they begin to fight over Dante's amulet. Virgil, wielding the katana his father left to him, Yamato, bests Dante and walks away with the amulet. Dante pleads for his brother to give it back, and he concedes, throwing it at him. He then leaves, claiming that he can retrieve it whenever he wants to. Sometime later, Virgil visits the island of Fortuna, home to the Order of the Sword, a religious group that worships Sparta and kills demons in his name. While arriving to investigate the Order, an unknown woman in a red dress notices him as he walks away, vowing that one day the world will know the true power of Sparta's son. Almost a year after his reuniting with his brother, Dante is back at his shop, where Arkham arrives. He extends an invitation from Virgil before disappearing. Shortly after, Dante witnesses Temenigru rise from the depths, Realizing this was the invitation his brother meant, he sets off to meet his brother at the tower. Dante reaches the entrance to the tower and defeats its gatekeeper. He is then joined by Mary, arriving to find and kill her father, who ignores him and heads into the tower herself. 
Inside the tower, Dante comes across a mysterious demon named Jester, who guides Dante through the tower, providing various bits of information about its layout and functions. Dante then encounters Mary again, who found her father, but was unable to defeat him. Mary once again evades Dante, who makes his way to the top of the tower to confront his brother. There, the two battle, and Virgil is able to overpower Dante, stabbing him with his Zimato and taking the amulet around Dante's neck. To make sure he's incapacitated, Virgil stabs Dante with his own sword, Rebellion, and leaves with Arkham. However, having tasted Dante's blood, his sword's power awakens, allowing him to harness his Devil Trigger power. After regaining consciousness, Dante once again follows his brother, and eventually finally meets Mary formally. Having abandoned her name with her old life, Dante is forced to refer to her as Lady. Meanwhile, Virgil and Arkham make their way to the control room of the tower, where Virgil stabs and mortally wounds Arkham, claiming to no longer have any use for him before entering the control room alone. Dante and Mary discover Arkham's body, and she becomes enraged to learn that she could not kill him herself. Dante leaves her to be alone, but shortly after, Arkham awakens, seemingly barely alive. He feigns ignorance, tricking Mary into believing Virgil had manipulated him from the start. He seemingly dies, and Mary shifts her vengeance to Virgil. Dante meets Virgil at the final seal of the demon world. Having inserted the amulet, as well as his own blood as a son of Sparta, Virgil is enraged to find that the seal does not open. Hoping Dante's blood will be the final key, Virgil attacks him, but the two are interrupted by Mary. As a surprise to all three, Jester appears, congratulating them on playing their part in his plan. Jester then reveals himself to be in fact Arkham, whose ritual to become a demon hadn't been a complete failure. Arkham then reveals the final ingredient to the ritual, the blood of the priestess Sparta sacrificed to create the seal, which happens to flow through her descendant, Mary. Arkham stabs Mary's leg, spilling her blood and completing the ritual. After the tower transforms, growing larger, Arkham finally opens a portal to the demon world. Inside, he is able to find and obtain the Force Edge, and with it, the power of Sparta. Dante once again fights his way to the summit of the tower, gaining Mary's trust on the way, who allows him to go on without her to take on her father. Dante eventually finds Arkham, masquerading as Sparta. During the ensuing battle, Virgil appears and the two brothers temporarily put aside their differences to work together to defeat Arkham. After doing so, Arkham loses the Force Edge as well as the two halves of the amulet before falling back to the tower, mortal once again. There, he encounters Mary one more time, who denies his pleas for help and denounces her name, taking on the title Dante gave her, Lady, as her formal name. Mary gives one final goodbye to her father before killing him, finally getting her vengeance but losing the final remnant of her family in the process. Back in the demon world, Dante and Virgil regain their amulets, but fight over control of their father's sword, and in turn his power. Dante is able to defeat his brother, but is unable to stop him from falling into the abyss of the demon world. After watching his brother fall, Dante notices a cut on his hand, one final indication from Virgil for Dante to not follow him into the depths. Dante then takes the Force Edge, as well as his half of the amulet, back to the human world, closing the portal behind him. Outside, Dante and Lady share one more moment together, establishing a friendship and devil-hunting partnership. Noticing a tear on his face for the loss of his brother, Lady claims that somewhere, a devil may cry, finally inspiring the name of his shop. In the demon world, Virgil encounters his father's arch-nemesis and his mother's killer, Mundus. He charges into battle against him, but is defeated in his weakened state. He is then corrupted by Mundus. Several years later, Dante is sitting in his shop when a mysterious woman falls from the sky and crashes through his doors, attacking him. He fends off her attack, and she reveals it to have been a test of his abilities. She introduces herself as Trish, and informs him that Mundus is planning a return at Malay Island. When she takes off her glasses, Dante is shocked to see that she bears a striking resemblance to his mother. Trish takes Dante to the island, but promptly goes on without him, leaving him to explore the castle there. Inside, Dante slays a variety of demons before coming across one named Nello Angelo, who nearly defeats Dante before catching a glimpse of his amulet, causing him to flee. Dante continues exploring the island, while Trish continues to show up to observe his progress. He comes across Nello Angelo two more times, and in their final battle, it is revealed that Nello Angelo is in fact the possessed body of Virgil. Dante finally defeats his brother, who disappears, dropping his half of the perfect amulet. Dante retrieves Virgil's half of the amulet and reflects on their childhood. Combining the perfect amulet again, Dante is able to unleash Sparta's full power inside the Force Edge. Later, Dante finds Trish injured inside of a cavern. He rushes to help her, but he is ambushed by one of Mundus' demons. After fighting it off, Trish reveals that she lured him into this trap, having been working for Mundus all along. While the duo prepare to fight each other, the after-effects of the preceding battle bring down a large piece of rubble, which Dante saves Trish from being crumbled under. Trish asks why he saved her, 
and Dante tells her it was only due to her resemblance to his mother. Angered by her betrayal, he leaves her and warns her to stay away from him. However, when he finally confronts Mundus, Dante discovers that Mundus is preparing to kill Trish for her failing to kill Dante. Despite his anger towards her, Dante attempts to save Trish, but is shot down by Mundus. As Mundus prepares his final blow, Trish breaks free of her shackles and jumps in front of Dante to take the blow. Mundus takes Dante to another plane of existence, where the son of Sparta asks the Prince of Darkness why he killed his mother. Mundus discards the question and claims that if Dante needs another mother, he can make him one, just like he made Trish, revealing that she is a demon. Having heard enough, Dante takes the form of Sparta and defeats Mundus to return to his temple. There, he finds Trish's lifeless body and laments that now both his mother and her had sacrificed their lives for him. Dante leaves the perfect amulet and the Sparta sword with Trish, leaving her and his parents to finally rest. As Dante departs the island, he is stopped by Mundus once again. However, Trish appears and lends Dante her power. The two are able to seal Mundus back in the demon world, but he vows to return again to rule the human world. Afterwards, Trish apologizes to Dante and begins to weep. Dante, claiming that devils never cry, implies that Trish has gained humanity due to their encounters. The two then escape the collapsing island in a plane and return to Dante's shop, now renamed Devil Never Cry. However, the new name doesn't last long, and soon Dante returns to his day-to-day, -day, taking jobs in his now renamed shop Devil May Cry, given to him by a new liaison named J.D. Morrison. One day, Dante is hired to protect a young orphaned heir named Patty Lowell on her trip to a mansion where she will receive her inheritance. This is ultimately revealed to be a ruse, however, and Dante takes in Patty. Dante continues to do various jobs, working on occasion with Lady and Trish. Eventually, Dante meets Patty's birth mother, a descendant of a sorcerer, Alan Lowell, who once sealed away the power of an ancient devil lord, Abigail, which was on par with Mundus's. A lesser demon named Sid is able to unleash Abigail's power into himself, and with it wreaks havoc with the intent to rule over both worlds. With Lady and Trish fending off an invasion of demons, Patty helps Dante challenge and ultimately defeat Sid. Patty returns to her mother, but always remembers Dante, returning to clean his shop while he's out. Later on, Dante is lured to an island by a woman named Lucia to meet her mother Matie, who explains that she once fought alongside Sparta to defend the island against demons. She asks Dante to help defeat Arius, the head of an international enterprise called Ouroboros, who uses demonic power with a goal to conquer the world. Arius' plan is to collect the Arcana, four items required to release a powerful demon called Argosax in order to obtain its power. During their attempt to stop him, Arius reveals that Lucia is a demon, created by him, and Dante is forced to hand over the Arcana to save her. During his ritual, Arius opens a portal to the demon world, and Dante, flipping a coin to decide who goes in, enters it to deal with Argosax while Lucia finishes off Arius. After defeating Argosax, however, Dante finds that the portal is closed, trapping him inside. Matier consoles Lucia about Dante's fate, liking it to a similar situation Sparta returned from long ago. Lucia then examines Dante's coin to discover both sides are the same. She returns to Dante's shop before she hears a familiar motorcycle pull up outside. Sometime later, we meet Nero, a member of the Order of the Sword in Fortuna, who bears a striking resemblance to Dante and Virgil. Nero is hurrying towards the Opera House to attend an order ceremony where Kyrie, a childhood friend and love interest, is performing. Nero encounters several demons, but is nevertheless able to reach his destination before the end of Kyrie's performance, and he subsequently gives her a golden necklace as a gift. During the ceremony, Sanctus, the Order's high priest, leads a prayer when suddenly Nero's right arm begins to glow, and shortly thereafter, Dante crashes through the ceiling and kills Sanctus. Dante begins to lay waste to the other members of the Order, and when he approaches Credo, Kyrie's brother, Dante turns towards her, prompting Nero to attack Dante to protect her. During the ensuing battle, the power within Nero's right arm, called Devilbringer, is unleashed, and he uses it to impale Dante with his own sword against the statue of Sparta. Dante quips that Nero was getting better and that he underestimated him before pushing himself off the statue and revealing to Nero that the knights of the order he killed were possessed with a demonic appearance. Dante notes that Nero is different than the others before escaping off before reinforcements arrive. Kratos summons Nero and tasks him with capturing and bringing back Dante to the order. Upon leaving the Opera House with Kyrie, however, the pair discover that the city is being invaded by a horde of demons. Nero separates from the two and begins to battle the demons. Making his way to the Fortuna Castle, he meets a new member of the Order named Gloria. Underneath the castle, Credo is working with Agnes, the Order's alchemist, to revive Sanctus through a ritual called the Ascension Ceremony, transforming him into a demon but allowing him to keep his human form. 
Nero reaches the facility, but is bested by Agnes, who has also undergone the Ascension Ceremony, and his White Knight demons. However, inside the containment chamber is Virgil's katana, Yamato, shattered, but contained by Agnes. Yamato, responding to Nero's emotion, mends itself and flies into his hand. A blue spectral demon resembling Nello Angelo appears behind him and helps him destroy the demons and scare away Agnes. Agnes returns to Sanctus and Crato to inform them about Nero's newly awakened demonic power. Sanctus sends Crato to apprehend Nero, while Gloria takes over the task of capturing Dante, having gained Sanctus' trust by obtaining and delivering the Sword of Sparta to them in the past. Nero reaches the Order, but is attacked by a demon-infused Crato. Nero defeats Crato, but Kitie witnesses Nero standing over him with his demonic arm. In the confusion, Agnes kidnaps Kitie and flees, angering Crato and causing him to forget about Nero temporarily to investigate the situation further. Inside the castle, Nero encounters Dante once again. Dante asks him to hand over his brother's sword, prompting a fight between the two. Dante is victorious, but tells Nero to keep Yamato, after telling him it needs to stay in the family. Shortly after Nero leaves, Gloria appears before Dante. He cracks a smile, however, and Gloria sheds her disguise to reveal herself to actually be Trish, who infiltrated the Order. Nero eventually reaches Sanctus, along with the giant statue of Sparta the Order intends to bring to life to create the Savior. Using Kyrie as a pawn, Sanctus is able to goad Nero into captivity. Sanctus then reveals that the Savior requires the blood of Sparta to reach its full power, blood that he intended to obtain from Dante, but will instead settle for Nero's, revealing him to be a descendant of Sparta. Sanctus takes Yamato from Nero, claiming it to be another key to unleashing the Savior. Crato arrives to try to stop him, but Sanctus stabs him with the Yamato, mortally wounding him for his betrayal. Dante arrives and distracts Sanctus, allowing Nero to use his Devilbringer arm to attack him. Sanctus and Nero are then absorbed into the Savior, which rises into the sky. Inside, Nero sees Kyrie once again. Crato, in his dying breath, reveals that the Order can now use the Yamato to open the Hellgate beneath the city, and asks Dante and Trish to save Kyrie and Nero, a request that Dante vows to fulfill. Dante makes his way back to the Opera House, where he finds and kills Agnes. He then finds and retrieves Yamato, using it to destroy the Hellgate. He returns to the Savior and drives the Yamato into its chest, calling on Nero to wake up and remove it from the other side. Nero does so and finds Sanctus, wielding the Sparta sword, inside of the Savior. He defeats him and saves Kyrie, bringing the Savior to a stop. Nero escapes with Kyrie and meets with Dante outside, who takes back the Sparta sword. There, the Savior awakens again and Nero uses his Devilbringer to defeat it once and for all. Afterwards, Nero and Dante part, with Dante entrusting Nero with Yamato. Nero and Kyrie reunite, but are interrupted by demons, which he turns to take care of. This takes us into Devil May Cry 5, with our hero answering yet another phone call. Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it, please give us a like, subscribe for more, and leave a comment to let us know what series you'd like to see us cover in the future. A huge thanks, huge thanks goes out to our boy Cross Cottonwood for all of his help making this video. Couldn't have done it without you, Cross. Thanks again, guys, and see you next time.